Hello everyone, and welcome back to Zora's Domain. Now that we have the Zora armor and the water bombs, we are actually capable of entering the Lakebed Temple at the bottom of Lake Hylia. So you can just head straight there if you want to do that. However, there are two cool bomb upgrades that we can get real quick. The first one is here in Zora's Domain in the throne room, so from the entrance from North Hyrule Field, you want to run forward, staying on this upper ledge on the right, and you'll come to a passageway that is blocked off by boulders. You want to use bombs to blow it up, and here I'm just going to use regular bombs since those are more easily found you know, around and they're less expensive than the water bombs, which we will also need in the upcoming temple as well as here in just a moment. Once you get past the first boulder, you'll see that there's yet another one, and this one is a bit trickier since it's like on a slope, meaning that the bombs will want to roll downhill. You'll need to hold it in your hands and throw it at the last moment before it explodes in order to blow out the boulder. Uh, but if you have a hard time with that, don't worry, because you can just hold it in your hands, stand next to the boulder, and allow it to explode in front of you. Um, but that's not really a big deal, because it only hurts you half a heart, so it's... <laughs> don't worry about it. Once you enter the throne room itself, you want to uh, get your water bombs ready, and then press plus, press the plus symbol on your Wiimote, and highlight the Zora's armor, and press A to equip it. This cool looking armor will allow you to breathe and swim under very deep water, so hop into the fountain of Zora's Domain, put on your iron boots, and you'll notice that the large volcanic rock that we warped here earlier is at the bottom of the water, but is no longer hot. It's just begging to have something happen to it, isn't it? So place a water bomb next to it, and once it blows, look who pops out, none other than one of the Gorons from Death Mountain. Apparently when this flaming rock was falling from the sky when we were atop Death Mountain, it landed atop one of the Gorons, who was now trapped inside it all this time. He explains that he was asleep, and the next thing he knew, he was trapped in the lava, and somehow very far from home. I assume that he was within the rock, and that's what he means by lava, unless he, like, took a nap on the side of the volcano itself and, like, fell in or something. That'd be kind of lame, just snoring there and suddenly you land into a volcano. Um, anyway, he goes on to give you a gift to show his appreciation, uh, and by giving you -da, the bomb bag. Yay! The Goron goes on to say that he's a bit confused by his current situation of being underwater, and he kind of likes it. It's like a cool hot spring. With that, you want to go ahead and take off your iron boots and swim to the top of the area and leave. Uh, there's some rupees up here that you can get as well. They're kind of hidden. They're like underneath this little platform. Um, so that whole Goron underwater thing is, you know, you could turn into a Goron in Majora's Mask, actually. And as a Goron, you did not want to touch water because you would sink like a rock. Because Gorons are made of rock, so that kind of makes sense. But yeah, I kind of feel bad for that guy because he's obviously too heavy to get out uh, unless like some of the Zoras like team up and help him because he's going to be crazy heavy. So unless he like somehow scales the walls and or digs and punches his way out, um, and because he's from rock, you know, you think the water, you know, it's all flowing in there because that's where that water is coming from for all of Hyrule. So won't that like totally wear him down? You know, he's just like rock will get all like smooth and then eventually he'll be like a pebble. Uh, but he can eat rocks underwater and stuff to compensate for that and survive, like build up some rock and then it gets worn down and build up some more, but I don't know. In past Zelda games, the Gorons actually needed to eat rocks that were from volcanic areas uh, because they were very nutritious. That's why all the Gorons live on Death Mountain. So I don't think he could actually survive off this Zoro Domain rock diet, so he's probably going to die, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I think that guy is actually doomed. Anyway, moving along. Now that we have all three bomb bags found in the game, which is pretty crazy, by the way, um, you know, there's eventually going to be three different types of bombs, uh, so I think that's why Nintendo incorporated this additional bomb bag feature in this game. In past little titles, there's only been one bomb bag available, and you can just upgrade it and make it carry more. Um, now, before leaving, there's one more upgrade we can get. You can go on a swim down Upper Zora's River and go into Izza's Rapid Ride. Earlier in this chapter, we helped out Izza by clearing the boulders in the Zora River portion that she apparently owns. Like, Zora River is split up into two portions at this point. One goes to Lake Hylia and one, like, goes through this little area that she owns. She has this whole mini game that's, like, she has to totally confis uh, confiscate it. Nobody else can use it. <laughs> Uh, thus allowing her to open up business once again. So we have cleared out all our boulders, so now she has this mini game that is now available. Uh, so we have the option of playing it, cost 20 rupees, and just to rent a boat to go down river. For this mini game, we are riding in a canoe that is following the flow of the water. You can paddle using your analog stick and use bomb arrows by pressing B. While aiming with bomb arrows, you cannot control the movements of the canoe, so you want to shoot quick, then return to steering. There are several giant jars along the way, yellow ones giving you one point, while red jars give you two points. There are 30 points total for this mini game. However, every time you bonk into something, you lose one point. So staying clear of the walls and other obstacles is absolutely vital to getting a high score. If you can manage to get 25 points or more, you'll get the prize at the end. Uh, either way, you can always try again by speaking with the Zora girl at the end and paying another 20 rupees to play once more. Now this minigame is pretty much unanimously agreed among fans to be one of the hardest minigames in Zelda history. 
mainly because it's just so awkward. The tips I can give are to watch the flow of the water, which changes of the water pattern are actually quite visible and abrupt, and you'll see the changes in the direction at specific points. Be ready to go against the flow of the water, and use them to your advantage depending on what's happening, by facing your canoe in the direction you'd like to go once you hit those points. Uh, for the most part, I recommend letting the water take you down the river on its own, only paddling to avoid obstacles. The natural flow of the water will automatically make you hit some things unless you purposely avoid them, however, in general it's fairly safe to let the water guide you. The best way to avoid hitting something is to plan ahead. For me, I find myself facing in the direction I'd like to go, then paddling straight forward, as opposed to kind of at an angle holding your analog stick to the side, uh, which would end up being an angle compared to the natural flow of the river. So you turn off to the left, for example, go straight, and then turn back to the right, and then continue following the flow of the water. It's, and that, for me, that's the best way to avoid hitting things. This game may take you several tries to get used to the pattern, and memorize where all the targets and obstacles are located. Once you get the hang of it, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting at least 20 points. It's getting to that 25 plus point mark that's the difficult one. Luckily, at the end of this route, there's six points right in a row, so that's really nice. Just one quick comment, who actually plays these games anyway? Isa totally has the market on this game, she owns a whole river, uh, but that takes you to the other side of Hyrule, and you never see any other customers in her shop. Who actually plays this other than Link, the Zoras? Do people come all the way from Castletown and Kakariko and go up the river and play this minigame and wind up all the way in Lake Hylia? I mean, the Zora girl takes you all the way back, I suppose, but I don't know, just, <laughs> you never see anybody else playing this. Okay, I guess I'm done winding. I'm only doing that because I'm pretty much out of things to say about this minigame. <laughs> I hope my tips help you, and I'll try to point out a few parts. Like here, I shoot the target, turn off to the left, start paddling forward, and I totally hit the wall with my caboose. You can turn off to the right, probably, and avoid that. But, anyways. Up ahead, there's actually an easier one. You turn off to the left, go forward, turn back to the right to face your canoe in the right direction, and then start shooting again. That was pretty quick, so you may want to rewind to check that out. Uh, but that is my method. It's not perfect, um, and I hit at least one wall pretty much every time I play this, uh, but I do manage to get a pretty high score every time. So I hope my explanation of this minigame made it a little less of a torture for you, and that you are more successful now in getting the prize. So don't be surprised if a lot of you have problems with this minigame. Like I say, it's one of the more frustrating minigames in the Zelda series. So. Once you get all the way to the end, you'll see the cinema of us floating off the waterfall that leads us back to Lake Hylia. You'll then talk with a part-time worker, and the Zora girl will then offer you to play again if you didn't do very well for another 20 rupees. If you got 25 points or more, however, you will get the prize, which is -na 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 -na, the giant bomb bag. Yay! And this actually upgrades all three of our bomb bags, so now all of them can carry more bombs. Uh, so now it will allow us to carry more depending on what type of bomb we carry. So if you have a bomb bag that's filled with regular bombs, for example, it's now been upgraded from a 30 bomb limit to a 60 bomb limit. And now the water bombs from 15 down to 30. And of course there's the third type of bomb, which I will not talk about yet because it might be considered a spoiler. Ha ha ha, you'll have to wait to even see what it is. <laughs> So now that we have that cool upgrade, it is especially useful for the Cave of Ordeals, and also once you get the bigger quivers. You have lots of arrows, plus lots of bombs, makes dun -da -da -da, bomb arrows. You'll be able to blow up a whole ton of stuff, and it's really sweet. Everybody likes explosions, right? So that concludes all of our side questy goodness, and we are finally, finally all done and ready to enter the next temple. I'm serious, guys. This time it's really happening. No more tricks. With that, you'll simply swim towards the dark circle on your map, which is the deepest part of Lake Hylia. And then you can actually swim downwards or put on your iron boots to sink down all the way. And actually, technically in the middle of recording this next dungeon, I realized that you can swim really fast by pressing A repeatedly while underwater. Gasp! I beat this entire game and everything and didn't even realize this was possible until I was halfway done recording my own walkthrough. <laughs> so that being said, in this scene, I'm simply holding A to swim down, but you can actually press it repeatedly to swim super duper fast. Simply crazy, man. Crazy tacos. Once you finally get down to the bottom of the lake, you'll find out that there are several Zoras down here. You can chat with them if you like, but they don't really say anything too interesting. In front of the very decorative entrance to the dungeon, on the ground is a cracked circle that has bubbles escaping from it. Our Zelda instincts tell us that this is bombable, so whip out a water bomb and blow it up to reveal a water geyser, which is blowing water and bubbles upward. Lay another bo water bomb on top of the geyser, which will float up and blow up the boulder that is in front of the entrance to the temple. You can chat with the Zora that is guarding the entrance if you like, and he is appalled that you blew it up. <laughs> he warns you not to enter that place because it has been corrupted by evil, uh, but he says, well, you're going to go inside, aren't you? <laughs> so that concludes this chapter. Thank you for joining me, and feel free to follow along with the next one, where I will take us through the Lake Bed Temple.